Hi everybody, Bill here, still here, and uh, it's another thoroughly miserable grey day in the UK, and it just feels, no jokes today, it just doesn't feel like a jokey day. Russia, Russia, what are you playing at? Just when we're getting over one problem, you you go and do that to Ukraine. I, I'm not going to get political, but you know, the last thing we needed. So yeah, it doesn't feel good, and I've been up to guys today, to the uh, hospital to see the oncology doctor. Uh, I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, place my order. Do you remember I placed my order for the colostomy uh, products or heliostomy products from Fittleworths, the supplier? Um, put that order in a, a week or two ago for a month's supply. So that is like 30 bags. And uh, had a call from them. The uh, Been a bit of a a cock up at the GP surgery. They've only authorised one bag. One. That's not going to be much good, is it? We have to change them every day, really. Uh, incidentally, it's not a joke. This is a fact. It's a fun fact for you. Do you know um, Napoleon Bonaparte? He had is reputed to have had a colostomy all those years ago. And do you know? You, you know, you see him standing in the photos with his arm in his uh, in his uh, shirt. Apparently, that's to hide the colostomy because his was made out of a, a goat's bladder. Amazing. Think how technology's changed over the years. I'm certainly glad I, I haven't got a goat's bladder for an ileostomy. Um, amazing fact for you. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I went to uh, Dr. Harris. I've just got back at lunchtime today. It's now about uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. And um, yeah, I, I first thing I did, actually, I went to have my fourth COVID jab this morning before the appointment with Dr. Harris, because I was invited to do that. I've had uh, two AstraZeneca jabs back in, um, well, last year or the year before. And uh, I've had the um, Pfizer jab, a third jab, that was in October, and I was invited to come in for the Pfizer booster jab today, which I did. So that went without any problems at all. I feel absolutely fine, and I went on to see Dr. Harris afterwards. Dr. Harris, Victoria Harris, who's my oncology doctor at Guy's. So she said, how are you doing? I said, well, I'm in pain. I'm not a pain, discomfort, not sleeping well. And you probably tell, I do look tired, don't I? I look tired. I think I've aged a bit. I, I just feel it's just getting on top of me, this infection. It's just not really clearing up. And uh, she said, well, the problem with that is we can't really start the chemotherapy course till the infection has gone. Because when you start the chemo, your body is not going to have the white blood cells to fight infection. And you've got to be careful about picking up bacterial infections and things because uh, you haven't got the same sort of immunity that you would normally. So the last thing we want to do is start chemo when you've got this infection because all the bacteria think, hey, it's party time. Let's uh, let's um, really, really mess up his body now because uh, you know, we haven't got anybody fight any, anything fighting us, no white blood cells fighting us. So that is a bit of an issue. And so what I'm, she's going to do is she's going to write to, um, to Mr. Kostadinov's team, the surgeon's team, and say, look, I think we really need to have another scan or a colonoscopy or something to see how we're doing with this infection before we initiate the chemo. So that's the next step, which I'm going to be waiting for now. Um, as far as the chemo goes, I signed away lots of consent forms. She went through all the side effects. It doesn't sound particularly pleasant. It will be a double dose sort of thing. It's called Zilox, that's X-E-L-O-X, -E or Capox, that's C-A-P-O-X. That's the sort of joint treatment because there's two types of chemotherapy treatments there. Um, if I call it Capox, that's easy to remember because it's the cap, which is capacitabine, which was the tablet form of chemo, which I had in the first round, if you remember, before I started, that was the first thing that happened during my treatment. Uh, that's capacitabine. I will have to take those in tablet forms morning and evening uh, during the course. And the other side of it, the ox, is called uh, oxalapita, o oxalaplatin, oxalaplatin. That's it. Oxaloplatin. Now, that's just, this is the intravenous one. And uh, this is where I'm going to have to go into the hospital. It'll be initially at Guy's Hospital, but I'm hoping then it can be in Sidcup. There's a satellite site there where I can go. And it's going to be once every three weeks. I have to go in there, spend a day where I have a blood test to start with, see how my blood levels are. And once they, that's all signed off as OK, then they give me the intravenous uh, uh, chemo, which I think lasts maybe a, a couple of hours. And then once I finish with that, I can come home, I hope. Um, the effects of that will last for up to 14 days or so uh, and at 10 to 14 days 
that's when I'm at my lowest and that's when the white blood cells are low and that's when I'm susceptible to bacterial infections. I've got to be very careful in particular. So grandkids, oh, you know, playing with the grandkids with all their snotty noses and all that sort of stuff. Any bacteria, any dirt, any mud, it's going to be quite hard. We'll have to work our way around that. So worry about that when the time comes. Um, but then after two weeks, you get one week off before the whole process starts again. I thought it was going to be a uh, three-month thing. Apparently it's minimum three months, but it could be up to six months. That's a long time, isn't it? But it's an insurance policy to make sure that my body's cleansed of all the cancerous sort of cells and stops it coming back again. Um, yes, and one thing is going to happen, the first thing that's going to happen is uh, my first appointment at Guy's will be with a, I have to have a pick line inserted. It's called a uh, pick line, which is a peripherally inserted central catheter a pick line, which is a, a long tube they insert up your arm, sounds horrible doesn't it, up your arm and round into your, near your heart and it's like having a cannula there all the time which is how they inject all the, um, all the uh, chemotherapy into you when you're in the hospital. Um, that, I've learned, is going to have to stay dry for six months or however long it takes. What, no showers? I, I mean, I don't know how that's going to work. I'm going to have to, I mean, one thing I love is a shower. I like to be clean. I like to feel clean. And um, that's going to be tough. I'm going to have to find a way around that. Um, so, yeah, watch this space and I'll let you know how I get on with that. Um, so, yeah, it sounds like fun and games with all the side effects as well. And, um, well... Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be challenging, I'm sure. But, of course, the first thing is to make sure that I've got this infection under control so I can get on and start the process. But having signed the forms, all the consents are done, so we're ready to go as soon as, uh, as, soon as the infection's down. So, next step is to wait for that uh, call, I guess, for the scan or the colonoscopy to see how the infection's doing. And I will keep you updated uh, as soon as I know what's going on. So, take care, everyone. Keep checking that poo. Bye-bye.